Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. After graduation, a young bee decides to escape from his boring routine at the hive and risks his own life alongside a human to defend the honey of his kind. Today we will recap the story of the 2007 movie, Bee Movie. One fine morning, Barry is at home preparing for his graduation. After sharpening his sting, he goes downstairs to have breakfast made by his mother, Janet. The young bee then picks up his car and drives to Adam's home, his best friend. Together they drive through the hive to reach the graduation ceremony. On the way, Adam comments on the tragic death of Frankie, who had his life cut short after stinging a squirrel. For bees, stinging an animal can be fatal, as its entire sting comes off. When they arrive at the event, the pair join their classmates to receive congratulations from their teachers. At the end of the ceremony, the young graduates already have to choose their jobs. As the life of a bee is not very long, they have no time to lose. The first mission is to decide what role the worker will play within Honex Industries. The first option is to be a pollen jock, whose goal is to get nectar and take it back to the hive. There are also the mixers, who make the honey. In addition, one of the highest paid jobs consists of doing stress tests with helmets, a very important job that helps increase the safety of the bees that have to face the dangers of the outside world. Finally, the newest invention from Honex Industries, the Krellman. The employees who operate this machine are responsible for making sure that not even a drop of honey is wasted. Trudy is the worker responsible for presenting the positions to the new workers and advises them to choose very well, because they will work in the same position for the rest of their lives. Upon hearing this, all the bees feel happy and secure, except Barry. Knowing that he will be doing the same job for the rest of his life does not make him relieved, but desperate. The situation gets worse when he discovers that no bee has ever taken even a single day off in their entire life. At the end of the presentation, the young bees can go home and have a few hours to make their decision. Barry and Adam are walking to their car when they spot the pollen jocks. Of all the roles, this is the one Barry admires the most, as those guys are the only ones who know the world outside the hive. On the other hand, Adam would never choose this role, since many of them end up not coming home. Two young bees confuse the pair and believe them to be pollen jocks. As Barry and Adam tell about their adventures in the outside world, the real explorers show up and invite them on a six-mile journey to the nearest sunflower patch. Adam refuses the invitation, but Barry accepts immediately. That night, Martin approaches his son and asks him if he has already chosen which profession he wants to follow. However, the young bee asks if it is not boring to do the same thing all his life. Barry confesses that, after that day, he came to believe that the honey-making business does not suit him. Upon hearing this, Martin gets angry and questions what he wants to do with his life. Janet arrives soon after and the couple decides that their son will be a mixer. While his parents celebrate the fanfic they themselves invented, Barry decides to go to sleep. Early the next morning he shows up, along with Adam, for his first day of work. Now they must find openings for their dream job. Adam wants to work as a Krellman, but they're all filled up. Seconds later, a new vacancy arises and the young bee gets the job he wanted. This happened because every time a bee dies, it gives way to a new employee. When it is Barry's turn to make his choice, he runs away. While trying to escape, the young bee receives a call from Adam through his antenna. Barry tells his friend that he is going to experience the world outside the hive and says that he needs to live this experience before he starts working for the rest of his life. He hangs up and walks to the platoon, which is preparing for the trip. After signing the life risk contract, the colonel informs them that rain is forecast for that day and instructs the pollen jocks to be on their guard, because bees cannot fly in the rain. In addition, they must avoid attacks of various kinds, from humans with soda cans, to birds that are ready to devour them. Before releasing the jocks, Lu Lo reminds them of rule number one, which prohibits them from talking to humans. The group leaves the hive and Barry is thrilled to have his first contact with the outside world. They explore the skies and fly among the humans until they come across a garden covered with flowers of all kinds and colors. The pollen jocks use their collectors to suck nectar from the flowers and take advantage of this to carry out pollination. In this way, the more flowers grow, the more nectar they collect, and the more honey the hive produces. In short, everyone wins. After making the first collection, the group moves to another part of the garden and Barry gets stuck on a tennis ball after mistaking the object for a flower. Helpless to do anything about it, his colleagues just watch as the young bee is tossed from side to side during the match. As the game progresses, the ball is thrown off the court and into the street. Barry ends up inside a car after being sucked into the air intake. When the family notices his presence, everyone is terrified and tries to eliminate him. The bee flies from side to side in an attempt to dodge the attacks, and the driver almost causes a serious traffic accident. Minutes after getting himself into that desperate situation, 
Barry manages to get out through the sunroof and intends to return home. However, he is surprised by rain and must find a shelter to wait out the storm. The insect is hit by a few drops of water and ends up falling into the window of Vanessa's apartment. Ken closes the window to prevent his house from getting wet and Barry can no longer get out. He struggles to get through the glass, but soon gives up and decides to look for another way out. Seeing the lamp lit, Barry mistakes it for sunlight and flies towards it. However, his plan doesn't work as expected and he ends up falling into the food Vanessa served to her guests. Just as the bee was about to be devoured, Ken starts screaming and grabs his boots to attack it. However, luckily for Barry, Vanessa shows up just in time and manages to stop her husband from eliminating the insect. The woman claims that every life has value and uses a piece of paper to lead the bee back outside. Until then, Barry had only known the scary part of life outside the hive, but when he met Vanessa he realized that not all humans are evil and dangerous. A few hours later, when it stops raining, Barry is still standing on the windowsill. He doesn't want to leave without first thanking the woman for saving his life. The bee again enters through the window and begins to follow her around the house. Despite his good intentions, Barry doesn't know what to say, much less how to approach a human without scaring her. When she hears the bee's voice, Vanessa is startled and knocks over all the dishes she has just washed. The woman believes she is dreaming and sticks her own hand with a fork in an attempt to wake up. When she realizes that this is real, she asks how the insect learned to talk and offers it a cup of coffee. As she is still terrified of the situation, Vanessa acts very strangely and instead of pouring the coffee into the cup, she spills the liquid on the floor. Hours go by and they continue talking on the building's terrace. The janitor shows up to change a burned out light bulb and is confused to see the woman talking to herself. Before leaving, Barry says goodbye to her and stashes some cake crumbs in his pockets to eat later. The next day, when he meets his friend, he tells about his experience in the human world and says that it was the scariest and most exciting moment of his entire life. After tasting a crumb of cake, Adam is fascinated by that explosion of flavors, but at the same time he worries that Barry wants to go back there instead of performing a function within the hive. Three days have passed and the young bee still cannot find his place in the hive. He is reflecting on life in a pool of honey when his parents show up to question him. Tired of being encouraged to become a worker, the bee decides to take a plunge while imagining what his life could be like next to Vanessa. In his dream, they go on a picnic in the park, and then the woman accompanies Barry through the skies with her mini airplane. At the end of the adventure, Vanessa crashes into a rock and her aircraft explodes. At this point, the young bee wakes up terrified by his own dream. So Barry decides to go see the florist at her store. When they meet, Vanessa takes her new friend to the market, where the bee is attacked. One of the workers uses a roll of newspaper to get the insect off the woman's shoulder. When Vanessa realizes what has happened, she is furious and hits back. Fortunately, Barry managed to survive without any serious injuries. When he looks at the next shelf, he finds hundreds of jars of honey and wonders how that food got into the supermarket. Vanessa tries to explain that humans also eat honey and Barry is outraged. He claims that the bees don't know that their honey is traded and says that this is theft. Controlled by hatred, the insect decides to take action about this crime. That very night, he prepares to reclaim what belongs to the bees. Hector is unloading some boxes full of honey jars when he feels the bees' presence. He opens one of the jars to use as a trap to lure Barry, and then pretends to be leaving. Suddenly, Barry shows up to start a fight with that guy. The man is perplexed to discover that the bee can talk and attacks it with a pin. The bee then uses his stinger to defend himself and asks who is providing all that honey. Cornered, Hector replies that the products come from honey farms and points to a truck that is returning there at that moment. Barry decides to go after the vehicle and risks his life in the middle of the traffic to reach it. His plan is to hitch a ride to that farm to find out how people manage to collect honey from bees. On the windshield, during the ride, Barry meets Moose Blood. The mosquito tells the bee to play dead, because humans eliminate everything that moves. At that moment, the driver turns on the wiper and all the bugs are sent flying away. Barry tries to hold on to the radio antenna, but is sent into a giant trombone used as decoration for the vehicle. There he meets Moose Blood again, and they become friends. The bee tells him about his plan after arriving at the farm, but the mosquito is more interested in going after the truck carrying human blood. Later, when he arrives at his destination, Barry comes out of hiding to investigate. At this point, he sees the beekeeper using a smoker device to release a toxic substance that makes all the bees in the hive dizzy while they steal the honey. To Barry's surprise, he soon discovers that this is just one of hundreds of beehives that were being exploited on that farm. To keep the bees inside the fake hive, the humans use the queen as a hostage and, day after day, steal the honey from the bees to sell it. Faced with this injustice, Barry records the thefts with his camera and takes the pictures to his hive. 
However, neither his parents nor his best friend believe in that conspiracy theory and prefer to believe that those photos have been altered. Still, Barry is determined to get his revenge. His efforts are noticed by the newsbees and he is invited for a TV interview. During dinner, Ken discovers that his wife is helping her new bee friend sue the human race for stealing his honey. After sending her husband out of the store, Vanessa puts sugar in Barry's coffee and, with the bee's approval, sends the case documents to the trial court. Weeks later, they are called to a hearing and Adam accompanies his friend in defending the bee's rights. With only a few seconds left before the trial begins, attorney Leighton Montgomery appears and Judge Bumbleton walks up to the courtroom. She gives the lawyer the word. And the man tells the story of his grandmother, a simple, farm-born woman who believed it was man's right to profit from all of nature's products. At the end of the speech, Barry has the opportunity to rebut that argument and assures that honey is the bee's most precious commodity, but some people believe they can take advantage of them because they are small and fragile. Klaus Vanderhaden is one of the owners of honey farms, and during the interrogation he is confronted by Barry, who reveals that the man never set free the bees he is holding captive. In addition, the entrepreneur even uses the image of a ferocious bear devouring bees as the shape for the bottle of some honey containers. The next witness to be cross-examined is Mr. Gordon Sumner, whose nickname is Sting. However, despite his stage name, the man does not have a stinger, and Barry accuses him of appropriating a characteristic of bees to further his career. Finally, the young insect confronts Ray Liotta, a failed actor who, after the early end of his career, has begun using his face to advertise honey. When confronted with his failure, Ray becomes enraged and tries to eliminate Barry. At that moment, the entire hive rises to help him, but the judge stops the fight. Days pass and the case is still not finalized. During a dinner party, Vanessa says she believes the jury is on Barry's side, and Ken appears shortly afterwards. The man can no longer stand to see his wife next to that insect all day and comes up with a plan to get rid of the creature. When Barry goes to the bathroom, Ken goes after him and uses a magazine roll to attack him. After failing on the first attempt, the man tries to incinerate the bee and ends up setting the entire bathroom on fire. Ken falls into the bathtub, and uses the full power of the shower head to knock the bee into the toilet. He flushes, but Barry manages to avoid being sent to the sewer. When the man is about to make his last attempt to eliminate him, Vanessa goes into the bathroom and tells her husband to leave, because their relationship has been problematic for some time. The next day, Vanessa and the bees appear in court for another hearing. Layden invites Barry to testify and has a foolproof plan to get the jury to turn against him. The man begins to insult him in front of everyone and Adam is furious to see his best friend being attacked. At this point, his sting begins to shake and he goes for the attack, but is stopped by Vanessa. However, Adam manages to break free and lands a stinging blow on the man's buttocks. This was everything the lawyer wanted most and he makes the most drama after being stung, pretending to be allergic to bees. Meanwhile, Barry rushes to the aid of his friend, who can no longer feel his legs. Hours later, he goes to visit Adam in the hospital and the young bee tells him that he would rather have died than have to wear that makeshift prosthesis that the doctors pulled out of the tuna sandwich from the cafeteria. Seeing a couple smoking out the window, Barry has an idea and directs Adam to get ready to go to court once again. While they wait for Barry and Vanessa to arrive, Layden insists that the judge dismiss the case in favor of his clients, who have businesses that are 100% in compliance with the law. The lawyer took his performance so seriously that he appeared using a walker to help him stand. However, before Judge Bumbleton can make a decision, Vanessa and Barry show up with the gun used to stun the bees before their honey is stolen. Layden then takes Smoker and claims that the device is totally harmless. However, the man accidentally uses the tool against the other bees in Barry's hive, and the journalists record the moment when they are all poisoned. In this way, Barry manages to win the support of the jury and the entire audience. As a result, the judge gives the bees the victory and ends the case. Barry and Vanessa celebrate. Now that all the honey will belong to the bees, the young bee is relieved that his people will no longer have to work so hard. Before leaving the courtroom, the lawyer states that Barry is circumventing the laws of nature and will soon regret it. Adam also hears the message and gets worried. For millions of years, humans and bees have shared the honey. Suddenly changing this could have negative consequences. In the following days, all forced labor camps were deactivated and the bees were given their freedom. Next, Barry made sure that every drop of honey that was stolen was returned to the bees, even that which was in the possession of the bears. Since then, honey has been banned in the cosmetics industry and even as a sweetener for drinks. Due to the overload of honey in the hives, the workers had to stop production for the first time in history. Now all the employees could take a vacation and rest for several days. As pollination by bees was no longer taking place, the flowers began to wilt and the beautiful gardens began to die. 
Vanessa has had to close her flower shop due to a lack of flowers and Adam shows his dissatisfaction now that all the honey belongs to the bees. The young insect barely started working and was already forced to take time off, just like all the other workers. Barry feels bad for seeing the factory completely empty and cannot understand how everyone can be sad after getting what they wanted. During a conversation with Vanessa on the terrace, the woman shows the real consequence of the stoppage of the bee's work and Barry is in shock to see all those plants destroyed. Minutes later, Vanessa picks up her suitcase and gets into a cab. The woman tells him that she is going to Pasadena to see the tournament of roses that has been brought forward, since all the flowers are dying. Upon hearing this, Barry has a genius idea to fix his mistake. All he needs is the help of his colleagues in the hive to take the pollen from these roses and distribute it throughout the state. The plan is to enter the place in costume and steal the float to take it to the Los Angeles airport. The flowers are then placed in the baggage compartment and transported to New York. Minutes after boarding, the pilot informs them that the flight will be delayed by two hours. Upon hearing this, Vanessa is terrified, for the flowers will not be able to survive without water for so long. In order to resolve this situation, Barry goes to the pilot's cabin, but is surprised when he realizes that the man intends to eliminate him using a vacuum cleaner. During the confusion, both the co-pilot and the pilot black out and Barry asks Vanessa to help him fly the plane. With no other alternative, the woman takes charge of the situation and realizes that the airplane is flying into a storm. Barry uses all his flying experience to help his friend, but the aircraft is struck by lightning and the devices stop working. The situation is being followed all over the news and the bees of the hive unite to go and help the young man. The pollen jocks cover the entire underside of the plane and Barry receives a call from the colonel. In that instant, he finds out that his family is there to help him and feels relieved. The rest of the hive unites on the landing track to indicate the landing site while Barry helps Vanessa guide the aircraft. After the bumpy landing, the insect's next mission is to use the flowers that fell on the landing track to pollinate the entire city. Barry receives his pollen jock uniform and feels that he has finally found his place in the hive. At that moment, all the millions of bees unite with a single purpose and make every corner they pass through blossom. After bringing all the plants in the city back to life, the insects return to the hive and restart honey production. Weeks later, Barry becomes a lawyer for other animals who also feel wronged and reconciles this new profession with his job of collecting nectar for the hive. Now that the bees have allowed humans to eat their honey again, there is much work to be done. So, what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.